I've talked with a number of uh, public utility groups and, and uh, utility agencies, and they work all the time to manage their, their infrastructure and to try to stay ahead of these problems. But it's a really hard task. And they're looking for ways to better prioritize how they do this maintenance. And by using a geometric network, they could actually identify the most critical infrastructure that they have. This would be the infrastructure that, would it fail, would cause the most disruption in the area. And that's where they want to target their maintenance efforts. So Harry's going to show us some of this process of how we can uh, use a geometric network to help identify these types of uh, critical infrastructure for this prioritization project. Yes, exactly, Tim. So as Tim pointed out earlier, we have resources available for you, so you don't have to start from scratch. And that's the route I always take. I like to prefer to download, configure, and use instead of starting from scratch. So what I did is I went to the solutions page. I searched for the water utility network editing map, and this is what I found. So I've already downloaded this to my desktop, and just to let you know again, what you're seeing is gonna require the standard and the advanced license level. And this is what I was given. I have an MXD that has tools and data and analysis uh, toolbars already created. So this is a great starting point for me. What you have here is a water network. It is a geometric network, which means that each pipe is connected to each lateral, which is connected to each main, which is connected to each uh, meter. So everything knows where everything else is at. We have our service connections and our hydrants and so forth. We also have this toolbar up here, this water utility network reporting. This toolbar was created by Esri. It's managed and maintained by us. It's also updated by us all the time. So with our each release, this is updated. Some of the tools on here are quite amazing. One of my favorite ones is just the very first one, which is the valve isolation trace tool. So let's assume for a moment that this pipe right here broke. How would you turn off the water to it? Well, this tool allows me to click on any pipe, and it's going to show me what valves I have to turn off. So the yellow dots represents the valves that need to be turned off, and this is where that break was. If this pipe broke, not too big of a deal. You turn off four valves, no services disrupted from the community, and everybody goes on happily with their lives. But what happens if this smaller pipe over here breaks? See the impact that will have on the community. If this pipe were to break at that location, you see that there are many, many other valves that must turn on, be turned off. Also, many properties are going to be affected because the water will be turned off at those particular locations. And sometimes if there's a critical customer at one of these sites, that could be bad. I mean, what if this was a hospital? So instead of manually going through this process with every single pipe, I actually want to automate this. So I'm going to go ahead and select these pipes right here. And I'm going to run what we call the valve isolation trace summary report. So I'm just going to run that tool on all 14 of these mains. And what is, what's it going to do is it's going to summarize on all those pipes how many valves have to be turned off, how many customers are going to be affected if one of those pipes were to break. And remember, this is a tool that, we've, that Esri's already created for you. You don't have to create this. There we go. So the next thing that we want to do is look at that trace summary. And here it is. So the pipes that you see in red have 11 to 15 valves that need to be turned off. That's quite a lot. And the ones that you see in green only have one to two valves. So this helps us understand the overall infrastructure and where some of the most critical pipes lie. But as I mentioned earlier, we want understanding which pipes serve critical customers, which pipes are major roads, which pipes are under railroads is pretty important information. So what we have is a pipe criticality tool. So under the water utility reporting examples toolbox, which again comes with the download, there is a tool called pipe criticality. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, I know this can be a little intimidating, but let me explain exactly what this model is going to do for us. I'll go ahead and run it. So this model is taking into consideration every single pipe we have. It's looking at the proximity to railroads, 
it's looking at the proximity to streets, and it's also looking at the proximity to existing capital improvement projects. It's then going to take all of this information and create a criticality score for it that can be adjusted and can be weighted. And once this is done, I'll show you how that can be adjusted. So based on this, an agency would be able to prioritize where they go out to begin their maintenance work as opposed to just picking a location. Exactly, yeah. okay. exactly. And remember, I went out to the resource, or to the solution center to download this information. And any of you can do that as soon as you uh, go back to your offices at the end of today. So there's a lot of pipes in the analysis, but there we go, it's, it's completed. And what I want to show you, though, is how it calculated this particular score. So what we can see here is that there's this code block. And it's basically saying, if this pipe is near a railroad and it's near a major road and it serves a critical customer, give it a five. Because a five means it's high priority and we don't want this pipe to break. But we also say if it's near a railroad but not near a major road and it's not next to a critical or does not service a critical customer, give it a four. So all these values can be changed and updated. So let's see what the results of this are. So the new information that was created is this pipe, pipe criticality. So let me go ahead and adjust the symbology on here. We'll use graduated colors based upon the relative score. So we'll flip the color ramp, and I'll also adjust the symbol size for all those properties at once, and hit OK. So what we're looking at now is the pipe criticality score. So the pipes in red means if that pipe breaks, it's going to mean a lot of things are going to happen. It means railroads or trains may not be able to go over the railroad tracks. It means hospitals may not be able to get water. It means that major roads may have to be torn up, which is going to create a lot of traffic. So this tool, which was, again, created by Esri, is very useful to help prioritize um, which pipes are critical. But once again, this resides on my laptop. And it would be better if it was given to the people out in the field and, in some cases, maybe even the public. So I'll use the file, share as a service, and I'll publish this as a service. Again, I could use my own ArcGIS for server, or I can use ArcGIS online. I've already done that, and, this are my and here are my results. So we're looking at those pipes on my map right here. What I did as well is I put in the CIP locations. That way the field crews are going to know which one of these CIP locations are currently being worked on and they're going to know where the pipes that are most critical lie. They can take this out in the field, open it up on their iPhones, their iPads, and so forth. But once the CIP projects start, we need to share that information with the public so that they understand what's going on. And one of the best ways we can do that is actually with a story map. And as we saw, um, as we saw in the beginning, San Bernardino County Department of Public Works has actually created a story map that is very similar to what I was describing, and that's their capital improvement project story map. You may recall this from the beginning of today, and what San Bernardino County did is use this story map to inform the public of where each one of these capital improvement projects are happening, and they've put in great information such as start date or end date. Okay. So we started with a question on which pipes would be most critical if they broke. We're able to find a pre-existing template that has tools to help us answer that question. So we use those tools and we use the data sets to really prioritize the criticality of each one of these pipes. We then share that information with the people in the field who need it the most, and when appropriate, we'd share that information with the public in one of these brand new ways, such as the story map.